He's a musical tone. Musical tone. Yeah, musical tone. I said a musical tone. Hello, Kevin. How's it going? Oh, hello, Mr. S. Yeah, it's good. I'm having a good week this week. Oh, that's good to hear, Kevin. Um, so, what's new? What have you been doing? What have you been up to? Oh, nothing much, really. I did find this magic wand, though, in the park when I was walking the other day. <laughs> what? A magic wand? Come on, you're kidding, yeah? No, no, honestly. It's a magic wand. I can do real magic. You know, like... Like Harry Potter. <laughs> You're right. Okay, well, I'll believe it when I see it. Go on then. Um, Can you turn something into something else? How about turning this pencil into a packet of sweets? Yeah, all right then. Pass it over. I'll just say the magic word. Abra, kadabra. There, I said you could... What? You've, you've really done it? That's amazing, Kevin. Go on, have a go at doing something else. Um, how about changing... Oh, hang on a minute, Mr S. I think I've proved myself now. I am a wizard. What's going on here, then? Yeah, what's what's all that noise we can hear? It woke us up. I was having a lovely sleep. Yeah, you don't, uh, you don't get beautiful skin like this by not sleeping enough, you know. You don't have to tell me. The bags under my eyes will be big enough to carry the shopping. What is the noise about? Well, Kevin was just showing me uh, he can do magic. He's found a magic wand in the park. A magic wand? <laughs> you must be joking. Magic isn't real, my dear boy. It's just a figment of your imagination. The only real thing is science. Oh, you two are so boring. Go on, Kevin. Show us. Convince us it's real. Uh, OK. Uh, well, how about if I um, try and take us somewhere? Oh, that sounds wonderful. How about... how about the jungle? Oh, OK. Uh, let me just stand back a bit and I'll say the magic words. Abra Kadabra! Kevin, you've, you've only gone and done it. That's incredible. We really in the jungle? Oh, wow, this is great, Kevin. Congratulations, you really are a wizard. Oh, I don't think I like it here very much. Kevin, can you take us back? OK, hold on a second. Abra Kadabra! And we're back. I barely felt a thing. Kevin? Yes, Barry? Is it just um, inanimate objects that you can change? Or could you change, I don't know, us? What do you mean, Barry? I think he means, um, that maybe, maybe could you change us from being socks into something else? Oh, that would be great. I've always wanted to be a monkey. Uh, this is a little bit embarrassing, but, um, I'd rather like to be an elephant. And if we're, uh, if we're choosing animals, um, uh, you know, I think I'd rather make rather a good lion. Kevin! Could you do it? Well, hang on a minute, guys. Uh, what happens if it goes wrong? I think I can do it. I just need to make a few little adjustments to the magic wand. Hey, it's ready. Who wants to go first? Are you sure about this? No, oh, I hate being a sock. OK, then. Here we go. Stand over there. Abracadabra! Whoa! It's worked! I'm a monkey! All my dreams have come true! Oh, that's wonderful, Kevin. Do me next. Here we go. Abra Kadabra! Ho oh, ho ho ho! I'm an elephant! Thank you, Kevin! Uh, it's just you, Dermot, then. You ready? I think so. Um, okay, Kevin. Here we go. Abra Kadabra! Oh, will you listen to me? How scary am I? Thank you very much, Kevin. You know what? This is me now. And this is me. And this is me! I'm not a stranger. 
stranger to the dark Hide away, they say Cause we don't need your broken parts I've learned to be ashamed of all my scars Run away, they say No one will love you as you are But I won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious When the sharpest word's gonna cut me down I'm gonna send a flood, gonna drown them out I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be This This is me, me. look out cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat I drop I'm not scared to be seen, I make no apologies This This is me It's my skin Well, far away Cause today I will let the shame sink in Oh, we are bursting through the barricades Reaching for the sun We are warriors Yeah, that's what we'll become Won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for us For we are glorious The sharpest words wanna cut me down I'm gonna send the flood, gonna drown them out I am brave, I am bruised, I am who I'm meant to be This is me, look out cause here I come And I'm marching on to the beat I drum I'm not scared to be seen I make no apologies This is me This is me Words want to cut me down I'm gonna send the flood Gonna drown me out I am brave I am bruised I am who I'm meant to be This is me You happy in your new animal shapes then? Are you sure you don't want me to change you back? No, no thank, thank you. you. Music Would you mind helping me with uh, a little bit of revision of the elements of music that we've been talking about recently? Oh yeah, no problem at all. What would you like us to do? Well, we could start with pitch, couldn't we, Mr S? Because each of these three guys have got different pitched voices. Barry has got a very low-pitched voice. Oh yes, I suppose you're right, actually. Um, When I speak and when I sing, my voice is very low or very deep. And Dermot, the lion, has got a medium-pitched voice, hasn't he? It's not too low, like Barry's, and not too high, like Sondico's. 
Yes, Kevin, I suppose you're right. It isn't uh, too high or too low. It's in the middle, middle pitched. And last but not least, Sondico's voice is very high pitched. Yes, you're right, Kevin. It is very high pitched. Low pitch. Middle pitch. High pitch. Thanks, guys. And let's talk about dynamics now, because sometimes people get confused between dynamics and pitch. I know. Dynamics are loud, quiet and silent. Whereas pitch is high, middle, low. Just because someone has a low pitched voice like Barry doesn't mean their voice is always going to be quiet. They're two really different things. Dynamics and pitch. It's a bit tricky though, isn't it? It's quite easy to get confused. Yes, it is, Kevin. Shall we move on to tempo now? We should be getting pretty good at this now. Remember, tempo is fast like a cheetah and slow like a tortoise. Kevin, fast like a cheetah, slow like a tortoise. But there are also lots of different speeds in between. Music can be fast, which quite often makes us feel lively and happy. And music can be slow. And usually that makes us feel a little more sad. What about timbre? I've heard you mention that quite a lot. What's timbre? Well, timbre is just the type of sound or the instrument. For example, if we close our eyes now, we could tell the difference between your voices because each of you has a different timbre to your voice. Also, if you play different instruments, you could tell the difference with your eyes closed. That's timbre too, isn't it, Mr. S? And that's it. I think you're really getting the hang of this now, Kevin. Uh, we haven't uh, mentioned texture yet, though, have we? What's that? Well, Kevin, as we've got Barry, Dermot and Sondico with us, I reckon we can use them to help explain. Sondico, do you know the song Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? Do you think you could sing the melody or the tune for us? OK, I know that one. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Sondico. Kevin, what you could hear there is one layer of music. Think of it a little bit like a sandwich layer. Sondico sang the melody. Now, if we get Dermot to sing underneath at the same time, the two layers of music are going into our ears at the same time. And that is two layers of texture. OK, shall I count you in, guys? One, two, three. Four. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. That was lovely, guys. Kevin, can you hear how now the music sounds thicker? Because there's two layers. Barry, do you want to have a go at adding a third layer? Uh, yeah, OK. Mine will be very low pitched, won't it? One, two, three. Four. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Lovely, guys. Now, we could keep going with this. What shall we add next? Kevin, do you want to grab a tambourine? Oh, OK. One, two, three, four. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. The sound started to get really thick now, isn't it, Mr. S? That was one, two, three, four layers going on at the same time. I know, Mr. S. Why don't you get your guitar out? And we could add that one last one. Five layers of texture. Oh, OK, Kevin. Hang on, I'll just grab it. One, two, three, four. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. That was great, guys. Perhaps we need a little bit more practice, though, before we start doing more five-layered textures. Shall we get on with the show? Oh, yeah, because this first video is all about how sound is made. Tombra of the Week. Hello, I'm Greg Foote. And I'm Franska. And this is the House of Sound. Yeah! We're going to be 
investigate the sounds of music. And find out how all different sorts of sounds are made. Sounds like these, this music. It's called Connect It, and it was written by a modern composer called Anna Meredith. So as you can see, we can all make musical sounds just by using our bodies. Yeah, and we can clap, obviously. Yeah. Yes, we can. Or we can sing. No, you can't. Or we can play musical instruments like a clarinet. But, first things first, what is sound? And how do we hear it? Well, pin back your ears as you're about to find out with this little film I made. So Greg is over there having a little bit of a snooze, but I think there's something I can do about that. Yeah, ha ha, very funny. Okay, look, let's slow things down a bit and see exactly what was happening there. Sound is a type of energy made by vibrations. And vibration is the word we use to describe something that's shaking backwards and forwards really quickly. When any object vibrates, it causes the air around it to move. You can't see this happening because it's tiny things called molecules that are doing the vibrating. The molecules bump into each other, passing the vibrations through the air. This is called a sound wave. If your ears are close to the vibrations, then you hear them clearly. The further a sound wave travels, the weaker it gets. So because I was very close to Fran's gong, the vibrations were really strong and so the sound it made was loud. We can't actually see sound waves, but we can imagine what they look like. If I drop this pebble into this paddling pool of water, then you can see little rings of waves moving outwards over and over again, getting smaller until they run out of energy. And something else about sound waves is that big things vibrate slower than small things. Slow vibrations make a low musical note, whereas small things like this triangle vibrate more quickly and make a higher note. We call this pitch. So slow vibration means low pitch, fast vibration means high pitch. Lovely. Um, I've seen enough of that gong. <laughs> can you take it away? The thing is sound waves can travel through anything that can vibrate like air or metal or water. Sound travels faster through water than air and even faster through metals like steel. What the sound travels through is called a medium. In fact, sound needs a medium to travel through, otherwise there's no sound. Fran, did you know that because sound travels so well through water, whales can sing to each other across a distance of up to 800 kilometers? Whoa. That is so far, it's the distance between Scotland and Iceland or the entire length of Italy. But look here, look at this demo that I've got that will prove that sound needs a medium to travel through. Okay. This is an experiment that was first carried out hundreds of years ago, made famous by this scientist, Robert Boyle. Mm, nice hair. It's good, isn't it? Believe it or not, in this big jar, there is an electric bell ringing, but we can't hear it because we've taken out almost all of the air out of the jar using this machine here called a vacuum pump. Now, it's called a vacuum pump because it pumps out the air to make a vacuum. And a vacuum is what we call a space where there is no air. And because there is no air for the sound waves to travel through, we can't hear the bell until I remove this pipe and let the air back in. So, that sound there, that, that's the air coming back in, but wait, wait. And there. Yeah. That's really cool, isn't it? And so this reminds me, of, you know in those space movies where you hear those big explosions mm. going off and they sound a bit like this? Yep, I know them very well. That is not actually how they'd sound. Instead, they sound like this. What? Silent? Yep. Well, that's ruined some of my favourite films, hasn't it? Cheers. So sound needs a medium to travel through. And to be heard, sound waves need to reach some ears and a brain. Because sound is all about vibration, we need to do a little vibrating of our own to hear it. Yep. Why don't you explain that while I build a giant human ear? Okay. Listen up, you lot. Sound waves are collected by your outer ear and travel down your ear canal. When those vibrating air particles hit your eardrum, it starts to vibrate too. Behind your eardrum are three little bones. The first is called the hammer and it's connected to your eardrum. 
The next one's called the anvil and it's connected to the hammer. The third is called the stirrup and that's connected to the anvil. When the eardrum vibrates, the hammer hits the anvil. The anvil hits the stirrup and sends those vibrations on into your inner ear. This is a very special part of the inner ear called the cochlea. It looks like a snail and it's filled with liquid which flows over lots of tiny little hairs. The vibrations shake the liquid and that makes the hairs wiggle. These hairs are the start of something called the auditory nerve. How the hairs move depends on the sound being made and the auditory nerve, which is a little bit like a wire connected to a computer, sends the information to the brain which turns it into the sound we hear. So Fran, how's your giant ear going? So this cake tin here is like our outer ear, so this bit, and then we've got the cling film, which is like the eardrum, and then this cup and straw represents the hammer, anvil and stirrup, those small bones, and they go into this bowl which represents the cochlea, and so this is the liquid inside the cochlea. Okay. So when we make a vibration here, it should go all the way down and make the liquid vibrate. Got it. Now I'm going to hit it and my hand is going to represent the moving sound wave. Right? And let's see what happens. Yeah, okay, it kind of works. Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Uh, you could, however, have just asked me and used this one that I made earlier. Much more realistic. No? No. Okay, bottom line, sound is all about vibrations and you don't need a musical instrument to make those vibrations. You can use bits of your body. Just like these guys. Oh yeah. Are you up for it? Of course. Right. Yeah! Ah. Yeah! Well, Mr S, I was watching television the other day and it mentioned all about a composer called Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Do you know anything about him? Oh yeah, Kevin, he's uh, well, probably one of the most famous classical composers there was, and he lived around about 250 years ago. I tell you what, I've got a little bit of a uh, video you could watch and a quiz at the end of it. Do you want to have a go at it? Oh, Mr S, that'd be great. It can be Kevin's quiz of the week for this week. Kevin's Quiz of the Week Have you got your answer sheets ready? Pause this if you haven't. Here we go. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart The Great Composer Mozart was born in 1756 but died at the age of only 35. Mozart was born in 1756 in the pretty town of Salzburg, surrounded by mountains. Salzburg is in the country of Austria, in the centre of Europe. The Mozart home was full of music. Mozart's father was a musician, composer and music teacher. And even from an early age, baby Wolfgang would lie in his cot and listen to his old assistant Anel playing the harpsichord while his mother looked on. Perhaps he was thinking, I'm going to be much better than her one day. Wolfgang and his sister were the only two of seven children to survive. Poor Mrs Mozart. As Wolfgang grew up, with teaching from his father, encouragement from his mother, and inspiration from his older sister. It wasn't long before he could play the violin and the piano better than anyone in the family. At the age of only six, Mozart started to compose his own music. His father soon realized that his son was a genius, and he had the bright idea of taking him on a tour of all the richest palaces of Europe so the kings and queens of the day could hear his son and marvel at how clever he was and let's not forget to make some money too. Wolfgang was still only a young boy and the touring was very tiring with long bumpy journeys by carriage. The lodgings they stayed in were dirty and uncomfortable and there was a lot of disease around at a time when medicine wasn't like it is today. The Mozarts often got sick. That tour lasted for three years, 
and then it was off on a tour of Italy for another two years. The story goes that while in Italy in Rome, the 14-year-old Mozart went to the Sistine Chapel and heard a piece of choral music called the Miserere by the composer Allegri. What was really amazing is that having heard it once, the 14-year-old Mozart could write down the whole tune from memory. At 17, he got a job back in Salzburg as a court musician, but it was very boring and badly paid. Mozart was very ambitious and decided to move to Vienna, the capital of Austria. He lodged with a family called the Webers and he soon fell in love with one of the daughters, Constanza. Mozart's father didn't approve at all, but the couple were in love, so they soon got married. Mozart made his money by performing on the piano, and he was brilliant and passionate, and soon his gigs were packed with fans. And he composed. Either rich customers would ask him to write special music just for them, or he would write new music for his fans. So what type of music did he write? He wrote sonatas, which is a type of music for one instrument like the piano. Or an instrument like the violin, accompanied by the piano. And he wrote concertos, a type of music accompanied by an orchestra, but for a solo instrument which stars, like the clarinet. He wrote a whopping 25 concertos just for the piano. As well as the piano, Mozart also wrote concertos for solos on many instruments, like the horn. And he wrote symphonies, a piece for a whole orchestra, usually in four movements, some fast tempo, some slow. And he wrote a massive 21 operas, where the actors on stage sing the story instead of speak it. To relax, Mozart enjoyed playing billiards, Music was pouring out of him all the time, even when he was in the bath. And he must have been composing pretty much non-stop. In his 35 years, Mozart managed to write over 600 pieces of music. That's a lot of manuscript paper. This is Ludwig van Kochel, and he organised Mozart's music with his K numbers. K1 was the first thing that Mozart wrote, and K545 he wrote at the age of 32, shortly before he died. Mozart just didn't give himself a break. By the end of 1791 he was exhausted, depressed and overworked, and he was feeling really ill. He still managed to finish his last opera, The Magic Flute and he was still working on some funeral music for a customer when he died on December the 5th. Like everyone else who wasn't an aristocrat, Mozart was buried in an ordinary open grave in Vienna. It wasn't till after he died that people really realised what a musical genius Mozart was. Mozart's music is still played by orchestras all over the world today and in his short 35 years he made the world a much richer musical place. Thank you Mozart.
Well, guys, it's been a really busy week this week. We've talked about tempo, fast and slow, dynamics, loud, quiet and silent. We talked about pitch and you helped me demonstrate that with your high, medium and low pitched voices. And we mentioned timbre, the change of sound or the type of instruments. And we've introduced as well texture where you helped me. and We built up that five layered song, our version of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Do you know what? It's been really good fun having you guys around. I was thinking, yes, Mr. S, what? Well, I was wondering if you'd like to join us every week and um, help teach the children music. Well, that would be fine. I, I would enjoy that. Well, um, I don't see why not. Yes, please. Oh, I think it would be good having you three around as well. Where are they going to live, though, Mr. S? Well, you know what? It's pretty cold at the moment. So why don't you come and live in the shed? Oh, Mr. S, can I live in the shed as well? It's pretty cold and wet round the back. 
Yeah, of course you can. Right, that's all the time we've got for this week. Do you think, as a challenge, guys, you could say goodbye to the children with a low to high-pitched, multi-layered, textured goodbye? Goodbye. 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 See you next week. He's a musical tone. Musical tone. Yeah, musical tone. I said a musical tone.